Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array, and welcome to video four of our Ultimate Premiere Pro Basics course. We just finished going over some intermediate editing techniques, and now we're working on text and graphics. So, let's get started with the fourth video. At this point in the series, you should be familiar with creating a project, managing your footage, and doing some fairly basic edits, and even some intermediate ones. But more likely than not, the projects you'll work on in the future will incorporate some form of text. Whether it's a big project like a commercial, or just a montage of your vacation footage, text can help give necessary information to make sure that people aren't confused by what's going on in your video. So how do you add text? There's two primary ways of doing this. The first is by selecting the type tool by either selecting it with your cursor, or by hitting the T button. Then click or click and drag to create a text box over the footage in your program monitor. The other option is to hit Control or Command T and a new text clip will be added where your playhead is located and it'll be added above any footage at that location. From here we can type in the text that we want to display. And we can move it around with our selection cursor to position it how we want. Great, we've just created a very basic title. But we can still make a lot of changes to make it work even better for our situation. First of all, this title works like any regular piece of footage, and it'll only last as long as the clip is present on the timeline. As soon as it passes here, it will disappear. So either lengthen or shorten it to fit what works best for you. Because our clip isn't drawing from pre-shot footage, you can extend your footage infinitely if you want. Now let's take a look at our text and how we can make some changes to it. In Premiere we can do this in two different locations, in the Effect Controls panel and in the Essential Graphics panel. Because we've already gone over the effects controls panel, let's take a look inside our essential graphics panel. Let's take a look at this layout. We can see at the very top that we have our title listed and highlighted. If we were to add more text boxes, we would see that more text layers would appear, all of which would be located in this one text clip box. Beside it to the left, we see a little eye symbol. This allows us to make our text either visible or invisible without deleting it. Here we have our new layer icon, and it looks like a page. Clicking it will reveal a variety of new options for new layers to add including text, vertical text, but also rectangle and ellipse. We'll get back to these two later on. Farther down we have our align and transform options. These allow us to use a whole host of options for manipulating our text. First we have our vertical and horizontal centering tools. These allow you to quickly get a perfect centering for your clip. But keep in mind this takes into account the entire size of the text box, not just the text itself. Below that, we have some additional inputs and sliders for position, anchor point, scale, rotation, and opacity, similar to what was available to us in our effect controls panel. You can also control your font and style from these dropdowns. The fonts available to you in Premiere are the same ones that you have loaded onto your computer. Install a new font on your computer, and it'll be automatically updated inside of Premiere. Beside that, we have our text resizing option, followed by paragraph styles, tracking, kerning, leading, baseline shift, and sume. All of these will help you to achieve a very particular looking style of text. Finally, we have our appearance section, where you can control text color, stroke, and shadow. By activating it with this check mark and then clicking on the color so that you can choose the color of your text. The same works for your stroke and shadow options, so play around with these and get comfortable with them so that they're easier to use in future projects. But this is just the very basics of the motion graphics panel. Now let's try adding what we looked at earlier, a rectangle. Why would we want to add this? Well, one reason is to create some really simple and effective graphics without having to dive into other programs. Go to the paper icon or go to graphics, new layer, rectangle, and a rectangle should appear on the screen. Now we have some of the same parameter options that we did before for text, and we can manually adjust the shape of this rectangle with the selection cursor. Over here you should be able to see the different layers of text and shapes that we're working with. It's important to remember that these layers are all located inside of this one text clip. By dragging the shape layer beneath our text layer, we can physically put our text over top of the shape. This can help us to make some really simple backgrounds for our text and help it to stand out. Or we can create a custom underline. Or my personal favorite is to duplicate the underline and put another layer over top of our text as well. This very basic tool can give you limitless options. And now what can be really useful and time saving is that if you like what you've just created, you can save it as a motion graphics template. This way the exact same file can be available for you to use next time without having to recreate it. Or if you're working with a team, you can be sure that your videos will have consistent elements regardless of who's working on it at the time. 
To save it, go to Graphics, and then Export as a Motion Graphics Template. Now name it, and it'll be saved for future use. But this is only part of what the Essential Graphics panel has to offer. Let's go to find where our Motion Graphics Template was saved. Here we can see at the top we have two options, and right now we're in the Edit option, but if we go to the Browse option, we can see that there's actually a bunch of motion graphics available for us to use, including the one that we just created. While third parties like Motion Array have motion graphics files available, by default you also have a bunch from Adobe that are just free to use and experiment with. Choose one and try to edit it. Drag and drop it into your timeline and wait for it to load up. If we select this one and then go back to our edit panel with this motion graphic selected, we can see that there's a variety of customizations available to us. It's important to remember that these parameters will be different for each motion graphics template, but we'll use this one as an example to get you started. We can see here that we can change what our titles and subtitles say by just typing it in. And our result is quickly integrated into the video. We can also manipulate the visual aspects of the graphics like text size and text shadow, and even color of different elements. What's great is that these changes don't impact the flow of the graphic. We won't interrupt its natural motion by making these changes, only stylizing it for what works for you. And guys, that's it. You've officially learned how to work with titles and graphics inside of Premiere Pro. I hope you found this video helpful, and I can't wait to see you in the next video where we explore working with audio.